Alright, hey guys, Simon here, and we are making video games. Instead, we're not just making them, we're publishing them. So, I would really, really appreciate it if you go to this link, or go to the link in the video descriptions, and play the game, and rate it something good, something more than two. <laughs> I mean, you can give it an honest rating, if you like. Obviously, five would be best for me, but... Above 2 would be good, because anything under 2, on average, gets buried in Congregate. So if, if the game is bad, they don't show it to people anymore. <laughs> so I appreciate it if you don't rate it 1 or 2. But other than that, anything's fine. And honest rating's good. Um, Alright, so this is it. Published. I mean, I might still have to change it a bit later on, but for now, it's, it's pretty much finished. And I did um, respond to most of you guys' suggestions. I mean, you guys left me a bunch of comments, which is really helpful. So I guess I should go through some of this stuff. Um, the music, like, some people liked it, some people didn't like it, and to be honest, when I play Flash games, I mute them myself. So, I mean, if you just kind of mute the sound immediately, I, I don't... I mean, I'm not... I'm not sad about that, because that's what I do myself to other people's games, right? And music, you know... It, it, it's, it's difficult to please everyone. I guess if I was a great composer, I can compose something that would be tolerable to everyone, but I'm not a good composer. Uh, not even close. So I'm just going to leave the music as it is. If you like it, you can listen to it. If you don't, you can mute it. That's what the mute button is here for, so... I'm going to leave the music as, at that. Uh, what else? I think one of, the, one of the ones that you guys talked a lot about is being able to put the pieces back so now, if you drop it back on the buttons, it'll go back. It'll go back to the, uh, into the buttons. It's actually quite easy for me to do. Like, it took me, like, three lines of programming to do this. And it's actually quite a good idea, too. Because the thing is, I've, like, I've got a physical puzzle here. I don't know if I can hear this, but I can tip this out. Like, you hear that? That's me dropping all the pieces onto my table here. So I've actually got this plastic pentominoes set that I've been playing with since I was a kid. And so for me, it's, it's quite, you know, it's quite natural for me to just kind of scatter all the pieces on the table, because that's what I do with the real puzzle, you know, with this toy that I have. But, you know, I, I fully understand that you guys want to clean up your, you know, your board, and so if you want to just put them back, you can do that. Just drop it back in. Great. So that was, that was pretty easy to change, and that's actually a pretty good idea, I think. Uh, Alright, let's just go through some of this stuff. Nothing wrong with the game, music's good and catchy, and tutorial's good. Oh, hints. Um, hints, it's, it's difficult to, to give hints for a puzzle game like this, especially because if you kind of go to one of these standard puzzles, like, there actually are 2,339 unique solutions to this puzzle. So, it's not like I can give you a hint to find one of them, because there's like 2,000 of them. Although, you know, given, I mean, having said that, there's only two for this one. <laughs> so what I've done is hints. I've given, given some general tips, so nothing specific, but you know, there's just some general concepts to, to help you start thinking about these shapes. So, you know, some of them fit easily against the edge, and then others don't. <laughs> like, these things don't fit very well against edges at all. And then some pieces like fit easily with each other, whereas others don't. You know, they don't they don't really fit together very well, whereas these do. And you know, some pieces can be a lot of different things, whereas you know, this piece can only ever be one thing. Like if you rotate it, it's still the cross. If you flip it, it's still the cross. Like no matter how you rotate and flip this one, it's still the same shape. And this one, there's only two possibilities, whereas this one has eight. So some of these shapes are more versatile than others. And then finally, if you if you still <laughs> need help. Basically, these are the awkward ones. You really should try to put these down first. But this one is, is the good one. This one is, is, is the one that you end up needing at the very end. Because it fits easily against edges and corners, it fits easily with many other shapes, and it's versatile. You can, you can rotate it and then flip it, and you get eight different shapes out of it. So you really should keep this one for the last, because you often find that the last hole is, is, is this one. So those are just some general tips. So nothing specific, but hopefully that helps a little bit. Um, I think that's pretty much it. Yeah, so quite a few of you actually talked about taking pieces off the board. Uh, isn't that clues are okay? I mean, I understand 
like you know, they say it, it's, it's good for, for the start, but then it gets just distracting afterwards. I don't think it's too distracting. Like for me, I can I can learn to ignore it. And the thing with the instructions is, if you have too much, then I think people can learn to ignore it. Whereas if, if you have too little, then people are just lost. I think it, it's it's better to have a little too much instruction than to have too little instruction. Just in terms of game design. Although I do understand the annoying part. Like sometimes when you play a game, and then the, the game keeps telling you, "Hey, go here. Hey, go here." Like you know, they're trying to tell you where to go, and in fact, you're just kind of wandering around and looking at at the at the scenery. Right? I do that a lot in games. I look at scenery a lot. And whereas the game keeps telling me, "Hey, go to the door. Hey, open the door." And so, it is kind of annoying in that way. But at the same time, I I feel like, and I and, I, and I'm pretty sure that that is better than. Having the player say, "Okay, I don't know what I'm doing right now," and then the game not telling you anything, and then you just kind of wander around aimlessly for ten minutes. So, you know, having too much instruction, I feel like is it is better than having too little. Although I, I fully understand that this becomes unnecessary after a while, like the, that the X and the Z and the Z on the screen there. I fully understand that that's not necessary after a while. But imagine if you kind of go away from the game for like two weeks and then come back. And you forget the keys, and you go back to the last puzzle you you didn't complete, and you just kind of go, you can jump straight into it, right? So it's for those situations that the instructions are useful, which I think it's worth more to have it than to not have it. But I do understand that you know it's unnecessary for for most people who just play the game, but it's it's just those situations where people do need it. It should be there. Anyway, that is my game design, my my understanding of it. Music is nice, but gets tiring. Yeah, music. Some people like it, some people don't. That's that's fine. The title, the logo, a like logo would be prettier, but I've decided to keep things really minimalist, or really simple. And I mean, the graphics here are are f- mostly fairly simple. And I'm, I'm doing this kind of deliberately too. I'm not just kind of you know being lazy, although I, I partly am just being lazy. But but also it's because I just want to keep things fairly simple and not too much clutter and too many graphics. You know, just kind of keep things visually quiet, as it were. And only the the important stuff, which is the game. Only the game is, you know, you know the the colors and the movement. It's all all stuff that actually is in the game, like not not the title. The title is not part of the game, right? I mean, it, it's the name of the game, but. It's not actually part of the gameplay, so only like the, the interesting stuff that moves around and that that kind of has any sort of you know visual effect are the only are, are the things that are only related to gameplay. So that that's, that's my choice, and so I'm just going to keep the title simple, even though as you say, my, a, a nice picture would be nice. But I'm just going to keep it really simple there. Uh, what have been Tomino's been on this visible? I don't know. I like having educational things out there. <laughs> I think it's okay. I mean, it's not like I don't think it it kind of gets in anyone's way. I mean, it's kind of down the bottom. Um, I think it was better when the pentominos disappear completely from the bottom. I understand that too, and I did change that. And what I've done is I've I've made the the difference more visible. Whereas before, you pull it out, and it becomes an outline. But because that's grey and that's grey. I can see how if your monitor has a lower contrast than mine, or if you maybe if you're kind of slightly colorblind or something, then then it's kind of hard to see that you've actually pulled a piece out. I've actually deliberately, you know, kept the shape there, if even though you've pulled pulled it out, because you can't actually use this to pick it up again, and it's just another way to kind of navigate these pieces. I think that is actually useful. So what I've done is, I've made the difference between. You know, one and the other are more clear, so that you know when you pull that, pull the thing out, you, you it's it's easier to see that you've actually removed it and it's on the it's on the board. Whereas before, it, it's kind of just kind of light gray versus light gray, and it's all kind of looks the same. So I've I've increased the contrast, as it were, between having the pieces in the button and having the pieces out of the button, and hopefully that that solves that problem because you were saying, well, you didn't say, but some people. Talked about how um, uh, actually, hmm, never mind. I can't find it. But I think the the the, the problem was that you couldn't tell whether you've taken a piece out or not. Whereas now you can. <laughs> 
and 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 you can still see that that shape is corresponds to that button. I hope that that makes it better. I think that makes it better. But yeah, okay. Anyway, I'll, I'll stop rambling about that because I mean it, it looks like you've kind of pulled a hole in the button now, doesn't it? <laughs> like a screen down there. So it looks like you've kind of just pulled this thing out of the button. So so it's visually it's clearer that you've actually removed it from the button, as it were. But you can still see that you know that that belongs there. Does that make sense? I feel like that's more useful. Um, and then difficulty curve is good. Music is good. He says. An alternate way to reset the puzzle pieces. Yeah, so quite a few of you say a different way to put the pieces back, and that's actually, you know, I said, talked about this earlier. It's actually quite cool how you just kind of put them back like that. And it was literally like three lines of code, so it was really easy to change that, to add that in. So they just kind of drop that back in like that. So that was great. Great idea. Um, and then in Champ313 says... Instead of having a menu screen when you click Quit Puzzle, just have two buttons, one for resetting the puzzle and one for going to the puzzle menu. I, I understand the idea of making this faster, so you kind of have to press twice to exit. Or you can kind of go in and press twice to restart. I understand just having two buttons making it faster, but the problem with that is people can misclick. So imagine if they kind of accidentally, if they kind of, oh, I'm trying to mute the music, and then they miss, and they press reset and they're like halfway through the puzzle and they've accidentally reset the thing. That's not good. So anything that has to do with quit game, everything, anything has to resetting the puzzle, like in any game you play, you'll find that, well in any good game you play, you'll find that you have to click at least twice to confirm quitting the game because you don't want people to accidentally click on it and then lose their progress. So that has to be two clicks. So it has to be a, a, a quit puzzle screen and then click again to get out with the option of going back in. Because you don't want people to, you know, misclick the thing and, and, and be really frustrated by that. So yeah, so I understand the um you know, this will speed up gameplay and allow players to jump in and out of levels quickly. As an idea, I understand it. I think it's actually a bad idea because of, you know, as I said, because of the possibility of people missing and misclicking and then accidentally just kind of resetting their puzzles. So, not doing that. Um, and then... Oh, mark is to show you what level you're on, so edit that too. So here he says puzzle 3 out of 23, and then you know, at the end it's just 23 out of 23, and then you know 15 out of 23. So I, so I added the, the numbers in, so you can see how far in you're in the puzzle. Because, and understand, because once you're in here, you don't go back to the menu. So you just kind of keep playing and keep playing and keep playing, and you don't actually know where you are, right? So that, that's an interesting idea. That's a good idea. So I've added, you know, the puzzle number in, so you can see where you are. Uh, hints, yes, I did. And all right, so yeah, so so thanks for the feedback to the last video. So that was really useful. I think I've improved the game a little bit, thanks to you guys. So that's that's good. It's good to get you know feedback. And yeah, so if you can. <laughs> click on the link, play the game, and rate it something more than two, that'd be great. That'd be great for me. So, um, alright, I'll stop rambling. And there we go! I published the game! I am now officially an indie game developer. I don't know that, if that means very much, though. <laughs> it's actually quite easy to do. I mean, you have to make, you have to make games, but these days, to publish things is really easy. Getting paid is difficult, you know, getting noticed is difficult, but getting things out there and playable, that's easy. Alright, I'm gonna stop rambling here. I guess I should make another game soon, or start making another game soon. So this was a good, was a good start, I think. I think it's a good start. Alright, um, I'll see you guys later.